Hello, everybody. This is Professor Lou. This is Lauren. And this is Art Fight! Lauren is a painter and she hates Gustave Courbet's painting, The Death hey, of no! Let's hear what Lauren has to say about this painting. The only thing desperate about the desperate man is his desperation for attention. The king of tacky paintings, and he's already achieved it at 24. It bothers me that I have to even waste my time on this painting because I hate looking at it. I hate studying it. I don't want to look into his face. He's got an ugly face and that's the worst part about it. He thinks he's so hot and he has no sense of humor about it. He just paints this selfie that is full of male, I'm top of the world vibe. I already get enough of that in the real world. I do not need his social realism or whatever to make me feel closer to this. I don't want to feel close to this. Why is this painting important? <laughs> I'm a professor and I happen to think that the desperate man is timeless and evocative. Oh. Let's really? hear my opinion. Gustave Courbet's desperate man is an immensely powerful, timeless work of art. Look at how the eyes in the portrait penetrate deep down into your soul. Gustave Courbet, his chiaroscuro painting technique, absolutely phenomenal. I wonder, is he only desperate? As the title suggests, I don't think so. Is he surprised? Is he startled? Desperation? is part of what it means to be a human. And Corbet taps so deep into that. That's my take. And guess what? You all get to vote at the end of this art fight to tell us who won. <laughs> all right, Lauren, you've got the floor. Clara, I don't know what you're smoking. I, I don't know what academic books you're reading. But you got this oh. all wrong. I do not know what you see. Oh. <laughs> this is the most narcissistic painting I have seen in my life. Every, every dude man who becomes a painter always makes a copy of this painting. It's, it represents the worst parts of art history. I cannot why you would ever say that okay first of all this painting has been around for centuries it's yeah. been the metropolitan and people are still talking about it i mean how often does that happen that an artist makes a painting and it sticks around for centuries like that is no okay. small feat you cannot okay. ignore that fact clara clara the met is paid for by the Sacklers. It's just rich people choosing what they like to look at. And rich people, we all know, have really poor taste. Oh. <laughs> I mean, guess who else is- people, though. What? This connects with people. Come on, tell me in the chat. How can you look at this painting and not have an impact. You know, when you go to a gallery, you see an artwork, you're like, eh, and you just sort of walk by. Like this painting grabs you and not a lot of things do that today. Did it grab you, Clara? Were you grabbed by this painting? Did he seduce you? He's metaphorically grabbed. <laughs> Is this one of your hot white men? No. Or do you have a crush like on Corbet? I do not. Is this your type? I do not. Oh. <laughs> I think that you cannot deny that a painting is timeless. Like, it has to be timeless for a reason. And I don't think it's just because somebody picked it to put it in a collection. I think clearly it's part of the timeline of art history now. I mean, so famous. And you can't discount that just talking about museums. What is it? What is timeless about it? It's only been around for what? When was this made? A hundred or so years ago? A hundred? fifties or so. Yeah, 150 years. That's not timeless. The pyramids are time timeless. 
the the it count? No, it doesn't. It's not been that what many. Years. You need to go. Also, I don't think you can call it timeless when the the opinions of people have shifted over the years. The read of this now is very different than the read of this 150 years ago. I, th I think the read of this now is what's what's the word that Gen Z has? Is it chuggy? It's chuggy. It's cringe. <laughs> it's super cringe. This is like someone that's trying way, way, way too hard. And I well, think even saying, back then. Oh, you're go ahead. That Gen Z cannot relate to this. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that. Well, I can't speak for Gen Z. I'm not Gen Z. I was just using a Gen Z word, but I am. <laughs> I am saying that the relationship to this painting now is really different from what it was back then in the sense that this just feels like a selfie. This is a selfie. This is the kind of face that you make as a selfie when you are really thirsty and you want people to leave nice comments about you. Like, look, his blush is applied all wrong. It's asymmetrical. He's not even good at doing his makeup. See, your argument that it's not relevant to contemporary artists, you just told me why it is. Because you said it's basically a selfie. And what does Gen Z know about self-portraits? It's their selfies. And so that connection alone makes it relevant. And I believe that any artwork that has an impact, it has to relate to different generations, different centuries over the years. And every generation has their own take on Okay, okay, Clara, what do you think about that banana piece, the the duct tape banana that generated an impact on many people? I'm not talking about the banana piece. <laughs> Back to me. <laughs> You're so full of crap. I'm saying I'm saying that the the ultimate effect of this painting is is negative and also is just gotten so kitsch that it doesn't even matter anymore it has doesn't doesn't speak anything deep it just the way that people relate to it now is it's a guy that is putting out a thirst trap and wants to look pretty because he feels rejected and wants other people to think he's all that because he feels rejected. And I think that you can agree with me because you were the one that told me the art history behind this piece about when and why he was making this piece. Well, let's contextualize that. So Corbet went to Paris when he was 20 and this painting was painted when he was 24. And your 20s are a rough time, okay? Tell me in the chat if you agree with me. You don't know who you are and you're in a new place and you're struggling to pay the rent and you know who you are as an artist, okay? So to me, that makes perfect sense that he's sort of desperate and horrified by his aspiring bohemian life that's going nowhere. I mean, what younger person today in their 20s would not relate to that? I think that this just speaks to the worst part about your 20 somethings, like watching an episode of Girls Late at Night or wait, not even that, calling your ex-partner at 3 a.m. thinking that's a good idea. That's what this painting is. <laughs> People haven't changed though. That's what this painting does. It shows that no matter where you are, what, demographic, we all have these feelings, Lauren. We all are here in the moment. And so this may have been made in the 1850s, but we still feel what he felt at the time. Okay, just because we have feelings doesn't mean that we need to share them all or that we need to act out on all of them. I have feelings sometimes that I want to curse out or even hurt some people, but I'm not going to act on those because that's a bad thing to do. We are humans. We have, what's that called? Emotional regulation. And I think that Corbet has not learned his emotional regulation yet. You're just trying to put him in a box. I mean, are you just trying to make 
unrealistic expectations and tell him what he should be? I mean, isn't that the chronic issue? I mean, he's showing his emotions in this unleashed manner. It's like he's telling you the truth. He's not trying to pose as something he's not. He's telling you he's desperate. And how many younger people today want people to know that? Most of us do not. And if we do, it's a risk because we risk being judged. And so okay. I, I just don't buy a word. I want to tell oh. you. I want to tell you all a story. And that is in my class, someone, someone did a portrait or tried to do a portrait that was similar to this. It was very, very exaggerated. Might I say staged because this is not realistic. Do people really go when they're feeling desperate? I don't think so. I think that's something you see in a play. Anyways, Clara said, this looks very cliche. You should redo it with your thumbnails. And so I think your true feelings on this are different than what you are arguing here. Let's take a look at some of the comments. Carolyn says, I like that it's, it isn't a normal self-portrait. And Seven Angelic agrees, 19th century selfie. And Jennifer says, I want to agree with Lauren, but I think it's pretty. Well, let's get back into that because you can't discount how innovative Corbet was as an artist. I mean, he really pioneered realism at a time when people were painting everything was a religious painting and so is, your average normal person wasn't painted but he's like realism? this is a realism is this realism well, is this social realism here well what's wrong with that <laughs> i'm just asking you is it is this real is this know. real what i mean it feels real to me it feels genuine and heartfelt unlike a lot of the other does stuff this feel I genuine I, I I personally think it feels extremely staged. I think that also it's pretty derivative from the romantic art that he was learning from at the time. I mean, look at how this relates to, say, Delacroix with all of that super intense lighting and the very intense posing. He wants to be part of a fairy tale. I mean, this might be him, but it's out of total through the lens of idealization. And it's one thing to say, do that for something like uh, uh, the French Revolution. That's a big deal. There should be some amount of mythology around that. But mythology of the self, why is he important? Especially when he's like some 20 year old. Why, why do I think that he's important? You're misreading it. He's not saying he's important. He's showing something true because here's the thing. Yes, you can look at a Delacroix painting and say, oh my gosh, it's this epic painting. But the thing is those epic sequences, they don't speak to the human experience. Like there's an intimacy here. They're, he's they're saying, this out. is who I am. The, those, those Delacroix paintings are all about talking about the human condition through story, narrative, mythology, and mythology has been used to tell, all, allegor or allegory has been used to talk about real experiences. Here we have all of the aesthetics of that kind of myth mythological and allegorical storytelling, but we have it used on just a regular old dude. I mean, Again, you're not arguing with me about why he is important. If you want to look at a painting that's like actually important and goes along with his values, you should look at the Stonebreakers. That's a real innovative painting. That's actually trying to uplift people that, that deserve to be uplifted. But this painting of himself, it feels very literally self-serving as if he's going to install himself in art history but with no no uh cv or or reason to, to to be in art history yet he hasn't paid his dues yet are you saying that self-portraits are inherently narcissistic that's what it sounds like to me kind of sometimes yeah 
So you're going to discount all the self-portraits in history because the self-portraits in history, they show you a lens. Like you can see the world through that artist lived experience. And certainly epic mythological allegories can be all fun and deep. But to me, one person's experience can be just as powerful. Okay. As those okay. Epic scenes. What are what are you learning from Corbet's lived experience in that painting besides that he thinks he's a pretty boy? <laughs> are you serious? Oh my god. I mean he's pretty good looking. Although I could lose the mustache. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew that he was no. one of your collection of white men. I knew it. No, he's not. He's got a mustache. I don't like mustaches. That's not okay. Doesn't your husband have a mustache? Yes. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't like it. <laughs> Let's see what people are talking about in the chat. And Mukan, sorry, I don't want to say this name. Mukan Dogri says the artist is free to do whatever they like. I didn't realize that it so affected you. I don't think it's so much that. Right, Lauren? I don't think it's offensive. I think what I am very tired of is looking through art school portfolios and seeing this painting being redone over and over and over again by every art school student that is applying to art school. I think that there is a problem with the relating to this painting and how it is kind of stuck like a bad pop song earworm in in the i don't know the pop canon of the world well lauren you've got somebody who agrees with you kathy says the emotion Thanks. doesn't look genuine looks posed and fakey thank you wonder so kathy. does drusilla says the exact same thing come on there's got to be somebody in here who agrees with me <laughs> you guys are not being helpful Oh, oh, here we go. Okay. Meredith says, I like how it is more than your typical portrait. Most portraits have almost no emotion, but this is different. He's actually making a face that is not just dead. I know. I mean, we used to call that the art school portrait where it's like, <laughs> it's just like straightforward <laughs> deadpan face. But look at the tension in those hands. Like you, you can feel him painfully ripping out his hair. I mean, that's emotion. Is that ripping out his hair? I, I've literally tried to do this pose a million times. And what this feels like to me, I do this all the time. You push back your long flowy hair. My hair is the same length as his. And you do this and you get that lighting and you get that like, you know, ooh, ooh, I can see all the tendons in my wrist. Oh man, I am so hot and thin and whatever. Like, wow, I am the archetype of beauty within western society this is so great wow everybody look at me oh. i think we are discounting a major part of this composition which is the clothing the clothing doesn't seem like it's the main event obviously because we're looking at the face but the clothing gives the painting so much depth and the lighting is so luminous, that's a part of composing a portrait that becomes very dynamic. You know, a lot of people think about a portrait that is, oh, okay, you just stand there, like background, stare forward, but this is so dynamic. Come on, I need a couple of people to agree with me. It's dynamic, but isn't he just basically taking from, say, Caravaggio, who I have to say, was so much more badass because guess what? He was actually a murderer and a ruffian and would throw bottles at people and do all of that kind of angsty edgelord stuff that Corbet wishes that he did. So what, are you saying Corbet should have been a murderer because otherwise he's posing his angst? I'm just saying he's a poser and nobody likes posers. That's facts, that's real deal. You can't say that's a fact. You can't say somebody is factually a poser. You can say, I think they're a poser, but that's an opinion. I, I mean, who agrees with me here? Is Corbet a poser? I mean, definitely seems to be uh, trying to be someone he's not. <laughs> well, Counselor Chip bringing it back 
into 2023 looks like Johnny Depp. Good craftsmanship, but he's not my type. <laughs> he's not my type either. But <laughs> those eyes, like I said in my video, they are penetrating. They are like digging deep into you. I mean, a lot of people look at paintings and have trouble in making a connection. I mean, you're going to have some connection to the space. Whether you like it or not, he pulls you in. And there's not a lot of paintings that can do that. I have to say that I barely even look at the eyes because what catches me first is that weird, gross little shine on his lips. Like, but maybe he's wearing lip gloss. Yeah, but so <laughs> if he wanted all that focus on his eyes, why did he put on the lip gloss? I mean, again, it makes me think that, oh, wow, he's really thinking about how luscious he looks because you got a lot going down, a lot of action going on down there. I disagree with you, okay? Because first of all, look at the pinks in the cheekbones, okay? That painting technique there is extraordinary. I mean, you can feel the luminosity it's like you can feel his breath i mean he's breathing breath. in this painting oh so seductive Claire. oh my gosh you're so bad <laughs> I, mean, I can practically feel him breathing wildly on me that's the thing though you feel like you're right there with him what <laughs> other painting makes you feel that way and you know corbet you can do the epic thing he painted this very famous painting, the artist in the studio. And oh boy, th this is this is an incredible composition. Here's another painting he did that was similar. So this whole idea that you think he's a narcissist. Oh my god, this painting. Yeah. I also hate this painting. Hi, what's wrong with it? Oh, it just looks like every Tinder picture I've ever seen. Come on. <laughs> he's not holding a fish though. <laughs> if he were holding a fish then that would definitely be the case. <laughs> he's practically holding a fish. I can't even see what he's holding in his arm there. I don't even want to know. That piece is too sexy for me, okay? <laughs> so Angelic says the motivation for this painting does feel like desperation, though, whether for attention or just because of life anxiety. Well, C. Cantrell agrees with you and says he's a teenage poser. And Maribeth says, when my brother came out from doing a test, he looked just TA test? What, what do you mean by TA? Is that teaching assistant? I have no idea. Anyway. I think <laughs> doing a test. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, maybe you can correct us, Maribeth. <laughs> and we also would say from Manda, I would cringe if someone looked at me the way Corbet does in the painting. But that's the point. He has this emotional impact where he makes you so uncomfortable you know and and yeah yeah important yeah, paintings does. lauren they don't have to be pretty but some of the ones that make you uncomfortable are the most impactful ones okay right so we should talk about why that discomfort exists and i have told you that that discomfort exists because there are so many guys of his age that act just like this who are just total jerks and i think when i look at this painting that he keeps in his studio and brings all his young ladies over and is like look at this beautiful painting i did of myself look i'm so hot i'm such a good painter and i also think that because he painted this coming off of these two rejections that he had from the salon that he applied to, and he was really just trying to make himself feel better. See, I don't know where you've come up with this fantasy story that you've concocted in your head. Like, you're ready to, like, let it go off the rails. I mean, why can't you see his vulnerability? I mean, that's how I see it that he's having a hard time. He's showing us that, yes, he's fragile, but he's also so beaten down by his bohemian lifestyle in Paris. And I think we need to have portraits we relate to, that not everybody has to look so fabulous in a portrait. He's, he's, he's showing that to us. He, he looks so 
vulnerable and fragile and yet he's putting up a front a lot of the people here agree with me that this is over exaggerated or that this is a kind of theatrical rather than actually showing a real emotion that you would experience Are it's like he's that? never actually had emotions before and he's just kind of guessing what they look like like honestly a lot of 18 to 20 somethings have before they've actually experienced life See, Control says, and yes! the signature is in red. Attention gay. Well, we haven't talked about the signature, Lauren. What's your take on that? Why is it red? It looks like a lipstick kiss. <sighs> I just see cadmium red. Why, why sign it on the front like that? So eye-catching. Because that's what people do on paintings. They sign the front. They, they could sign it, he could sign it in black or dark blue, like it's so on top of the painting there. It's like his, his uh, signature really matters. We really need to know who painted this. We really need to know this desperate man so we can look him up and call him. <laughs> I totally disagree with you. You know, there's a whole argument for artist signatures that have a strong presence. Look at Oscar Kokoschka. He used to write, okay, in like huge <laughs> letters and it was so out of the blue and nothing to do with composition. It's like, dude, okay, we know. But that is a different way of talking about yourself, okay? My impulse is to, okay. He's already talking so much about himself. This is on a self-portrait. Yeah, but you got it all the way. You this is like, this is like little. tripling down, doubling down. This is... This is really, really, really going over the top. I disagree because here's the thing. Let's picture there's no signature in red, okay? okay? That glow of the pink in the face would be too centralized. And so he pulls you downwards with that signature and then that red on the face doesn't feel so out of the blue. He had a scheme. I know he did. <laughs> But there is too good of a painter to have not thought about that. <laughs> There's already red that's down in that corner on the left side there, outside of the signature. We would already be pulled in subtly. We wouldn't be like, eyes go move straight down to that end part there. He is, this is the one thing that I won't argue with you about, Corbet, is that he is a technically good, very good painter. He does know <laughs> what he's doing. I, I will not argue with that because he he is actually a good painter. I the thing I argue with is why would he waste his good skills on a painting that's so vapid? See, we have Ariel here saying, I don't know, I like this painting. I was pretty lost and terrified in my twenties. Do you see how many people relate to this, Lauren? I was a mess. I mean, I wasn't I was around doing this. I'm still but I a felt mess. Like it. Yeah, I'm not saying it gets better when you're older. I'm just saying that most people have that feeling when they're in their 20s. And the fact that I can relate to a dude in the 1850s, that he still speaks to me. I mean, that that really makes the timelessness come across. Does, does this really make you feel nostalgic for that time when you were mess in your 20s, Clara? Do you want to go nostalgic. have a guy? No, but I relate to it. <laughs> I relate to the feeling of feeling overwhelmed about everything well we have tambo who says looks like a drama queen and jazz says a bit generalization of guys amanda says he's as pale and pasty as my brother and n mcm says i have to agree with clara corbet expresses himself insanely effectively you may not agree with him but quite honestly you don't have to try and discount it for being unrealistic. Exactly. I feel like you're discounting theater, okay? Because you said theatrical. So are you saying that the emotions that you see in theater are, are because they're not realistic, they're not genuine? I'm saying that when they are used in a narrative way that is beyond just, what's it, navel gazing, then they really have some use. But here, I don't really know. There, I don't really know what this painting is saying beyond, oh, I, I, what was me? And what was me? I don't even really know why what was me. There is no kind of, 
I I am not sold on his plight here. I think it's theatrics for theatrics sake is what I'm saying. Not just as I actually love the theatrics, emotion isn't always contained, or at least not everyone is able to contain it. I think the exaggeration works. And 10,000 Crow says I'm 32, and this guy is me at 3 a.m. And Usi says I like the shadowing because he pulls you in with that shadow in the neck. Oh my gosh, th th this is like explosion of beautiful shadows. I mean, these shadows just as a painter make me just drool. The technique, not him. <laughs> <laughs> but look at the lighting, look at the tension, look at the cast shadow that's on his white collar and, and then the wrinkles. I mean, like, oh my God, it's so good. Is he wearing a bow? What is he, what is the blue? What is he wearing? Isn't that like a giant cravat? Isn't that what it is? I don't know. I'm not sure what people wore. Again, I'm not going to argue with you on the technique. You know, he's, he does some beautiful shadows. He does beautiful lighting. I think that it's definitely very, uh, talking, talking back to Caravaggio, talking back to Delacroix, who I think are better painters in this particular regard. I think that he's done a better job with other paintings that are not this painting. He's done some really great, huge paintings of people working in the fields or, again, like Stonebreakers. Barely but at Ormond. Or yeah. Yeah. He, he can do a really good job. But this, this painting is not the painting. And yet it's the most popular painting he's ever done. It's it's the one painting that always shows up when you look them up. So I I also have a bone to pick with society here because this is God, you got a bone to pick with everybody. <laughs> uh, mostly him and the art history canon professors like you that make oh I don't yeah, teach art history. So, I don't have a PhD. So deep. Oh, let me put on my glasses and wear my hair back and talk Maybe about. I will. Maybe I will. <laughs> You're judging me so much, and you don't understand who I am. Look at me. You see, does that? No, oh, you oh, you oh, are oh. the ivory tower. You are you I are can't. channeling full ivory tower right now, Clara. Well, we have a comment from Ten Thousand Crows who says, "Wait, is that the real photograph of him?" Yes, it's it is. Indeed. And I wonder if seeing this real photograph of Corbet next to his self-portrait. Does that change your perception or, or do you not care because you're like, oh, it, that's just photo of him. That's just documentation. Now, what about you, Lauren? I looked at the photos of him like, yeah, this this tracks. This is I kind of prefer the photos of him. You know, it, this is much more real, real dude here. And in fact, I like the ones where he's like even older, too. And he's just kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a picture of that because where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay, let's see. Yeah, here he is. That's him in his older life. Yeah, I feel like this is much more real. This is some social realism here. This and that other photograph. This is the one case where I'm like, oh, photography. I will take that over the painting. I, I'm sorry, but these paintings—they're way too romantic and schmaltzy for me. Uh, that's just, oh man, so saccharine, so like, like whose gaze is this? Uh, there's right, there's, a gap, there's a gap between our values here. <laughs> Tell us in the chat who won this art fight. Was it me, your pretentious art history? Actually, I'm a poser art history person. <laughs> I don't have the art history PhD. I didn't write a thesis or anything like that. I just have passive knowledge of art history. I have to say, too, for those of you that are asking in the chat here, um, we had a question uh, from Glenn Art Stuffs. Is this the thing where they give the give a position where they aren't argue, arguing their actual opinions? Uh, this is our real opinions. This is real. This is the revamp. This is the real deal. I do actually really despise this painting. I hate looking at it. <laughs> I don't know. The painter in me really has trouble with that. It's just, there aren't a, do you know how hard it is, technically speaking, 
to make this painting? Like, just picture the technical how many, piece. How many hours? No photos. No photo references. I mean, use a mirror, work from life, whatever. I, I am resentful about how many hours we went over this painting versus any other painting by any other artist. I mean, I feel like if you want to talk about self-portraiture and someone who is really good at it, all you really have to do is look at Durer as far as like Western art goes. Huh? Rembrandt, Rembrandt is it. I, Rembrandt's I, I, great too. Except Rembrandt made everybody, even who wasn't him, look like himself. Who doesn't do that? Come on. Everybody I know. He was. Totally been accused. I mean, people. same, same. But he's just like number one offender. Everyone looks just like him. In fact, that's how art historians tell whether a painting is a Rembrandt or not, is if it's got like those dark beady eyes or whatever that look just like him. <laughs> That's very funny. Okay, we have some votes coming in. Let's see. We have Lauren. Lauren, Lauren. Three, four. Uh, let's see. Five, six, seven, oh. eight. Hey, I haven't done mine yet. That's just you. So don't <laughs> scare me. Uh, uh, uh. Look at this, Lauren. One, two. Oh, oh. Wait, I thought there were more. <laughs> what? What? Not, oh, you got more. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Come on. I, I'm going to get. Oh, 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 here we go. BK. All right. But <laughs> I think you did win, Lauren. This is so annoying. What the heck? It's because I oh, hate yeah. this more than you love it. That's what I, I agree with, Counselor Chip. Um, it's because we need to do something that you really hate. Which is funny. I want to tell you guys, it was actually really, even though Claire and I disagree so much over everything, we could not find a painting where we hard. had, it was, it was really hard. So. <laughs> Yay. Thanks everybody. That was a really fun art fight. Tell me in the chat if you would like to see our fight continue because we have a lot of fun. And oh boy, were those videos fun to do. Although my glasses are full. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, Drus Drusilla says, can you put up a poll? So Clara, afterwards, could you put up a poll for everybody yeah. that does it, watches it afterwards? Yep. Cool. Please join us in the Discord in the post live streams channel so we can dunk more on Corday or support him as an evocative, timeless artist. Guess what, everybody? This is brand new. 2023 art school portfolios group this i think actually is the best format we've come up with for supporting bfa and mfa applicants because it's support on an ongoing basis it's not just a one-off piece of advice it's not just one artwork at a time it's where we really get to know you and lauren i think that's one of the biggest problems with these applications is people don't get continuous feedback they just get it in these random fragments yeah, when I applied for school, I only got a few critiques on my portfolio, and then mostly I was just on my own. I didn't have week-to-week -week, uh, supervision. Yeah. And this is definitely the biggest bang for your buck from us. It's 30 to $40 monthly. It goes through Patreon, and we hope that some of you will take a look. And by the way, you don't have to be applying this year to be a part of this group. You could be in this group for a little bit to get started making a plan because I know a lot of people find that helpful. And remember, registration for our September workshops is due this Friday. We are offering selling your art, underwater creatures, food illustration, and expressive figure drawing. Our prof has services. We have artist calls, personal art curriculum, statement editing, portfolio critiques. Huge thank you to our incredible, loyal, top Patreon supporters. I am so amazed the way you have stuck with us. Thank you. Thank you. Visit ourprof.org. We have content that's not on YouTube. Use the search bar to find what you're looking for. Our prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And subscribe to our channel for more tutorials, critiques, and business tips. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.